So thank you very much. Um, I would like to bring you on a journey for the next uh, 10, 15 minutes. One year ago, uh, we met AnyLogic at the Masm conference in Phoenix, Arizona, and we had the idea to do simulation with the AnyLogic uh, software, as for us, it was the only one who combines discrete event simulation and agent-based simulation. And one year later, I would like to show you where we are at the moment. So I would like to show you now the challenges, the goal, the idea, then the model description, the results, and uh, the impressions and the lessons learned. Mm. When I come to the challenges, um, we need to understand that we have different levels of simulation needs and different levels uh, of need for understanding uh, the whole semiconductor supply chain. We have on the lowest level uh, the clusters and the tools. Uh, such a tool costs about 5 million euro. On the second level, we talk about a fabrication. So this fabrications are somehow in the order of 500 million uh, euro, and there is optimization there. Then we are on the level three, which is the internal supply chain. Not everything is done on one factory. Uh, usually a chip travels around once around the world before it is finished. So you have many uh, production sites until a chip is finished. So this one we call the company supply chain. And then we have a fourth level, end-to-end -end supply chain. This goes from supplier, supplier, up to the customer's customer. And especially here on the fourth level, we needed a combination of agent-based and discrete simulation. So what is the challenge here on this fourth level? Uh, of course, all those levels are interrelated. So uh, from top down, uh, the requirements go down. And from bottom up, the data come up. So what you see here is the biggest challenge in the semiconductor supply chain, you see a blue curve. And this blue curve is a global domestic product. You see this blue curve is fluctuating quite a lot, plus minus 3%. Uh, so the y-axis on the left shows from minus 3 to plus 3%. And the semiconductor market, which is a red line, fluctuates about the same, but it's by the factor of around 10 more. So you see here from 1997 to 2012, uh, the biggest challenge is that we have a much higher uh, demand fluctuation. I think all of you who are in supply chain know the expression bullwhip effect. Some of you may have already played the beer game where you can experience that uh, the fluctuation at the factory is much, much higher than on the demand market. So. Any question to this bullwhip effect? Because everything what I'm talking now relates to this bullwhip effect. Everybody can understand that? So <coughs> the, the market at the, at the customer, at the OEM, is quite stable. Then it fluctuates a little bit at tier one. It fluct fluctuates much more at us. So this is a, is a key element and a key challenge. So now, uh, repeating the challenge why we did this, the pullback effect is a well-known and studied phenomena at human behavior that affects supply chain in all industry. It posits that there are large and larger fluctuations that demand the further back you look in the forecast-driven supply chain. It is, however, even more important to understand its drivers and impacts in the semiconductor industry as the long cycle times, high capital costs, and rapid price declines in Moore's law put extreme pressure on supply chain to be as lean and as efficient as possible. So now, how we did that? Uh, we wanted to use the AnyLogic modeling software package to test that. Uh, we wanted to model a well-known and researched yet ever important topic with the field of semiconductor manufacturing. We wanted to show what the Bulwick effect looks like in our supply chain and what extremes it exists. We also wanted to examine the connection between market demand fluctuation and the fluctuation in demand we receive from our customer. Now coming to the idea. 
we created agents for each of the major players in the supply chain and gave them behavior based on the well-known beer game. We then retrieved real cross-domestic product and semiconductor market data to use as our input signal. And finally, we created a simplified internal structure for Infineon, as the agents, Infineon, and the market were then all linked together using discrete event process simulation methods to combine a hybrid model with a highly realistic structure. So combining discrete with agents. So now I just wanted to show you a little bit our modeling approach, which is uh, more generic. So first, which question should be asked, then which output uh, we want to have, then what level of detail is needed, of course, uh, the, lowest, uh, the lower the better, then uh, what data is needed, then do we really need uh, a simulation or um, uh, can this be made with something else? Then uh, can uh, assumption be made, uh, be made assumptions? Then uh, is simulation necessary or not? Um, yes, it is necessary. And uh, then we start with simulation and following our generic approach of when we need simulation or other models, here uh, we needed a simulation. Now let me come to the model description. Uh, so model description, um, so a very simplified supply chain showing the raw material supplier, Infineon, tier one supplier, OEM and the market. So we have orders coming from the market to the OEM, to tier one supplier, to Infineon, to the raw material supplier. And we have deliveries um, uh, going the other way. So we have on the one side the information flow and on the other side the material flow. Now how does this lo look like now in an ed any logic uh, view? Uh, you see here is uh, any logic description, and here we have the semiconductor company, which is uh, Infineon in this case. And now let's look a little bit more closer to the semiconductor company. Uh, the semiconductor company we modeled here uh, with uh, two parts: a planning and control version and a base system. I'd like to show you the planning and control and the base system. So first of all, here we have the planning and control. As uh, a planning on control uh, exists here of a more detailed view where the decisions are made um, where to produce in front and in back end, um, when the decisions are made where to produce it, and on the, on the right hand side here you see the uh, planning logic. Now let's look at the base system. On the base system uh, we have here the front end, uh, we have here the die bank, we have here the back end and we have here the distribution center. Uh, so front end is one process part, dive bank is another process part, uh, back end is another process part, and the storage parts are the DB, dive bank, and the DC distribution center. Uh, now, I, what I'm showing you now, uh, we didn't need to uh, show the bullwhip effect. Uh, this is just to, to show what uh, other parts of the model are capable of. Uh, so we separated here via a decoupling point. So we have a make to stock process to the die bank and we have a make to order process uh, from the die bank uh, to the distribution center and to the market. Uh, now after having, it, having uh, explained uh, the discrete event simulation part of the model, I'm coming now to the agents. And agents uh, behave differently. So there are, we have two kinds of agents. Uh, we have uh, uh, a careless state and an anxious state. Uh, and uh, whenever, they, whenever agents are anxious, uh, they just order more. So uh, whenever you don't have anything in stock, you get anxious and you order more. And we modeled it by a way plus 20% of the demand. And then when you have a lot of stock, agents become careless and they don't end, end, order much less than the demand. So we model them as minus 50%. So ever of you who ever played this beer game, this is what you really experience. Uh, there is risk aversion, you react not like, like the data are, you overreact. So this are the agent part of the simulation. Now, uh, how does this look now in, um, uh, any logic, you have an agent behavior, uh, so either, either over-ordering or under-ordering. And now let's look at the results, what came up 
out from this uh, simulation. So when I'm coming to the results, I first need to change the color a little bit. So you need to think now a little bit. So uh, we have now here the blue. The blue color still stays the blue. So the blue is the OEM, the overall equipment market. So this is somehow related to this uh, blue curve, the real gross domestic product. Then we have in the middle the tier one, and we have on the right hand side the semiconductor. And uh, so what, whatever is now um, the black line is a, is a red line here, and whatever is the blue line uh, stays the blue line. So we have here a little bit of change. So the next uh, need, you need to uh, rethink this a little bit. So could we really model that the outside world is not fluctuating, but we have a very high demand? And those, that's what actually coming out. So we have the OEM, you see on the right hand side, the OEM does not fluctuate a lot, it's quite stable. You also see the variation down, so on the very right hand side, um, uh, the OEM demand, on the lower side, um, uh, the variation. Uh, and then you have the demand of the tier one, so the one who supplies to the OEM. And what you see here, you see here quite some fluctuation. And on the lower part, you see also there's a variation. And on the left-hand side, you see the semiconductor demand. And uh, this also shows the fluctuation which we had uh, before. So again, this is a picture, uh, OEM demand, tier one, and uh, semiconductor demand. Now let me come to the end. Uh, our impressions and the lessons learned. Uh, it's a very user-friendly user interface. Yeah, well, it's called user interface, so maybe UIF, user interface friendly. Uh, this applied also uh, without extensive previous knowledge of programming of simulation, so there was no need of any consultancy in between, so it could be used right away as it was with the tutorials on the net. There was a satisfying set of functionalities, particularly the option to combine discrete and agent-based uh, modeling was here crucial, uh, as um, it went beyond uh, the normal uh, discrete event simulation. Uh, system dynamic functionalities was not used, also, of course, it's there. And um, it provided a very attractive results and uh, because it has two and 3D representation options. Uh, so far to my presentation, I thank you very much and I'm ready to answer any questions you have. So the questions from the audience? Okay. Seems no yes, question. A question. No. Um, it seemed that you um, could uh, rebuild the uh, behavior that you experienced before, but uh, did you do any experiments to um, try to um, comp um, deal with the bull whip effect? So of course, could the this is the next. Of course, this is the next step. Okay. Uh, first of all, at an old simulation, you need to prove that the simulation results uh, can uh, relate to the reality. Yeah. Uh, once you have done that, of course, you can do it for uh, different applications. One of the applications is, of course, use it for internal training so that everybody becomes aware of that. Yeah. Uh, we do this at the moment with a much simpler uh, a game, a bullwhip game. Um, and then the next step, of course, can be is that we talk to uh, our customers and show them the behavior and show them what happens. Uh, but we have a proven situation uh, where we not only can play the game, but when the customer has a certain situation now, we can implement it sh and can show uh, the simulation of that. Uh, absolutely agreed that it is just a starting point. Okay, thank you. Hello, uh, just a clarification for this first uh, question. What part of the organization are you coming from? Is it strategy or operations? Um, and also, just to uh, also, uh, who all do you collect information from within the organization and who, you, who do you see as the, the receivers of the results? 
Well, uh, I'm coming from the supply chain organization. Um, my department is supply chain innovations. So we, we are looking for uh, general and big solutions to improve the situation and we came out that we did a tremendously good job on uh, simulating on cluster level, on fab level, but the biggest problem, of course, comes due to this amplified demand. Uh, and um, the receiver of that, of, of the results, are those uh, who are uh, working uh, with customers, but also those, um, also uh, partially with, without, with me, uh, who do some uh, uh, major projects for the future, uh, for example, to reduce this pull effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, you had in the simulation for the agents, um, based on their, on their state, anxiety, or um, different sizes of their overreaction on the demand. Did you know this from experience or did you, was it an assumption and did you also uh, played around with it and vary the size of this effect? Of course we played around a little bit. You saw the plus 50 and minus 20%, so it's what not even, we played around with that. Uh, but the theory for this anxious or careless basically comes from uh, the Nobel Prize winner, Daniel Kahneman, and I think many know this book of uh, thinking slow, thinking fast, and uh, of course it's not only a, uh, a belletristic book, uh, what he published, there is also some theory behind, and we use the theory. And I think that's the reason why uh, agent-based simulation um, enters now the market of, of simulation. And that's, I think, therefore we are, many of you are here, uh, because you know that's the limit of discrete event simulation. There is some limit when you have people in and you need to somehow uh, um, get them in because they are not behaving like discrete events, they are behaving like, yeah, actually like agents and uh, that's also, also the reason why we went to AnyLogic because for us it was the only software who combines both and by the way also for the discrete event simulation we didn't see any disadvantage. More questions? Okay, thank you for presentation.